Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're in Wiggins Park, less than a quarter mile from the battleship, looking at one of the largest artifacts in the battleship's collection. This is one of Battleship New Jersey's four propellers. This one was on the ship in the 1950s and was donated to the museum in 1999, before the museum even had the ship. This 4,400, 539-pound nickel, aluminum, and bronze propeller was donated by the Bontivoglio family. They bought it from the Navy at some point prior to 1999. Thanks to stampings on this propeller and the Hall History Index cards from the 1950s, we know a little bit about this propeller. So first off, this propeller is 18 foot, three inches across. The battleship had two of these four-bladed 18-foot propellers that were outboard. And this one was outboard on the port side. It's the number four propeller. She also had two 17-foot diameter five-bladed propellers on the inboard skegs. This particular propeller is Bureau of Ships numbers 5243. It was cast in the Philadelphia Navy Yard at some point prior to the 1950s. On April 13th, 1952, propeller 5239 was removed from the ship because it had over 30 cracks in it, totaling about 15 feet in length, some of which were an inch and a half deep, and because there was about four square feet of pitting on each propeller blade. So, in 1952, that propeller is removed and replaced with this one. This is a good point to stop and say that ships get their propellers changed pretty frequently over time. Uh, so this is not the propeller that was on the ship when we got her. The ship does still have all four of her propellers on board. All four Iowas have all four of their propellers on them. However, they did have other propellers over time. You can see this one is not perfect. It's got dents and dings and scratches on it. Uh, and But otherwise, it's in relatively good shape. We're not seeing uh, any severe pitting on the blades. And as we go through the history of this propeller from the Hall History Index card, you'll see that it had repairs over time. But there are a lot of things, from propellers hitting things and getting dinged up, to just having uh, abrasions worn into them from air bubbles or cavitation popping on the blades. So any of these sources, uh, shoot, some ships even slip their dunce caps and the propeller falls off the shaft. Uh, I've heard of that happening before too, though not on uh, New Jersey. So for a number of reasons, propellers might need to be replaced, like this one was. It's fortunate that this one was saved because like I said, there are still four on the ship. You can't see them, they're underwater. But fortunately we have this one within a quarter mile of the ship, mounted here in a traffic circle between the battleship and the Camden Aquarium. This particular propeller, like I said, is installed in April of 52 while the ship is in dry dock. She goes into dry dock approximately every two years during her active life, about every 20 years as a museum ship. So in September of 54, this propeller is inspected again and found to be in good shape. It's only two years old. In June of 57, the ship is being prepared for decommissioning, which will take place in August of that year. During that time, she's put into dry dock. All the sea chests are blanked over. A lot of underwater hull work is done. And that includes uh, welding over the pits in the propeller and fixing any dents or scrapes. And it was determined at that time that this propeller was in good enough shape to save. They just wanted to make some repairs and then grind it all smooth. They covered it in paint, which is something you usually don't do when this is in use. But since it was gonna be sitting stationary for Lord only knows how long, uh, they figured it was better to cover it in paint to help stop the dissimilar metal corrosion between this and the rest of the hull. In 1968, a decade later, when the ship is being reactivated, they pulled her out of the water into dry dock. But in 1968, it was determined that uh, the propeller was not in good enough shape after sitting there for a decade. And so they chose to remove it and replace it with a new one. However, it was kept in the inventory. And in 1985, as the Iowa class battleships are all being reactivated, it is reconditioned at the Philadelphia Navy Yard and uh, stored there for some period of time. We're not entirely how long it was because when it was not on the ship, we do not have Hall History Index cards for it. Um, but then at some point, 
between 85 and 99. It is sold for scrap. And then the company that acquired it, instead of scrapping it, donates it to the museum so that we can put it on display here at the Camden Waterfront. So um, there's actually a huge amount of debate in the museum ship community about whether you should leave the propellers on the ship or not. The argument for taking all of the propellers off the ship are if they stay on, it's a dissimilar metal and this bronze based alloy is more noble, more pure than the ferrous metals around it. So it will cause the propeller shafts and the steel of the hull to corrode more quickly. Also, on an active ship, the propeller is constantly spinning. The propeller shaft is constantly spinning. On a stationary ship, the weight of the propeller and the shaft is crushing down on the gland seal where the shaft passes through the hull of the ship. This crushing will crush that seal and over time allow water to start to leak into the shaft alleys and the bilges. Battleship New Jersey is very fortunate that we have not suffered this problem yet, but other battleships and museum ships have. Finally, if the propeller is on the ship, you can't see it. That said, the argument for removing it from the ship is you're now making the ship less complete. And once you've removed it from the ship, you lose a little bit of control of it. So once it's not on the ship anymore, you either have to pay money to display it somewhere. You're already trying to preserve this whole ship. How do you pay money to move it somewhere or display it? Um, and there's a chance that it'll end up getting scrapped, lost, misplaced. Like this is a valuable amount of uh, bronze and other metals. Fortunately, it is here on display under the protection of the county. Uh, we've had several police cars drive by just while we've been here filming. So we're not too concerned of anything happening to this. But if we remove all four from the ship, do we need four propeller displays around? Some of those might go missing. Some of them uh, might be disposed of intentionally by the company. And now we do not have as complete of a vessel anymore. I have worked on ships that have the propellers removed and on ships that still have the propellers on them. And personally, I haven't decided which is better yet. Um, as a curator, I would prefer that the artifact not be lost. And the safest way to do that is leave it on the ship. But that does cause the macro artifact, the ship itself, to corrode more quickly. It's not an issue if we're getting the ship into dry dock periodically like she needs to, but we aren't. She hasn't been in dry dock since uh, she was decommissioned in 1991. So not uh, in the last 30 years, which means that there could well be corrosion there. Typically, uh, ships have zinc, uh, uh, zinc anodes bolted to the hull that help with dissimilar metal corrosion. New Jersey's would have been last installed in uh, 1990 or 1991. They're good for about 10 years, so they're almost certainly gone. Plus, zinc is what you use in salt water, which is what she was in in Bremerton where she was in mothballs. She's sitting in fresh water right now. It should be aluminum alloys, and we've got none on the ship. Uh, so dry docking is something that we're talking about. We don't have a date yet. We don't have money yet. Uh, it, when Missouri was dry docked, she's the only Iowa that has been dry docked. This would have been about 2009. That cost about $18 million. Uh, we think we can do it for less, but it still gives you an idea of how much it costs to dry dock a battleship. Uh, so we've got to raise that money and be able to pay them before they let the ship out of dry dock, uh, which is why we do not have an exact date for when we're going yet. Hopefully it will be in the next five years because we're already 10 years overdue. All of the other museum battleships have leaks of some sort that they have dealt with as a museum. And we will too before too long. So if you have any questions about dry docking the ship or the ship's propellers, let us know in the comment section down below. Also, there's a link in the description down below. You can click on it, it'll take you to my Facebook page uh, where you can ask me questions directly. There are so many comments here on the YouTube page that I don't get to all of them. Uh, the Facebook page is something I check more frequently and you might be able to get a hold of me there. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. The support you've given us is what allows us to preserve the ship, major artifacts from the ship, and keep her in good enough shape that she hasn't sunk where she is 
despite all of the uh, years between her last dry docking. We really appreciate it, and there's a link in the description for more ways uh, that you can donate to support us. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find our channel and find out about the museum. Thanks for watching.